Turkey. That's because the federal government already banned travelers coming from those three countries. Third hat fact of the day, restructuring. I told you yesterday that the Senate is holding public hearings on restructuring across the country on the 26th and 27th of this month. Here's a programming note. I'm just giving you warning for next week. Hard Facts is going to be looking at restructuring a lot leading up to those hearings. The Senate has listed 16 issues related to restructuring that they want you, the public, to talk about at the hearing. So we're going to be talking about those 16 issues here on Hard Facts. Uh, my goal is to provide you context, start the conversation with you, so that you'll be prepared to make your case in front of your senators. Yes, I expect you to attend those hearings, so it's not enough to be calling me and complaining. You have to go to those hearings. You have to let your senators hear what you want out of restructuring all those things you come and tell me every day you have to go and say them to um government officially put it on the record huh one million Lagosians cannot be wrong they listen to hard facts they start with the big three let's talk about the lagos ensars panel awarding 7.5 million naira to a man disabled by police then let's talk about reactions to the Southern Governor's decision to ban open grazing. That one's a long one, and we can't, well, I can't wait to get into that particular story with you. And then let's talk about Jusun asking the federal government to deduct state judiciary allocation directly from FAC. Remember, you can talk to us on Twitter at Nigeria Info FM. Facebook, where we're streaming live, is Nigeria Info 99.3. We've got two numbers. One of them is for women. One of them is for men. Those are the numbers that you should call to share your thoughts on any show. 01465-7190 for women. 01465-7190 for women. For men, 0700-993-993-993. Today is Thursday, so we're going to have League of Extraordinary Nigeria as always and after that we're going to have eyewitness on the big hard fact let's talk about the bill in the house of reps to create women only seats in all legislative houses we're going to look at the pros and cons of that approach uh, to gender e equality as well as other alternatives that um, other countries have tried my guest is going to be chief andy Oboforebo, who is a very seasoned political analyst and policy maker now of course news updates will come your way at the top of every hour if you want to win on just a minute you have to listen to every single thing that i say that's how you win on this show but let's get started lagos i'm sandra ezekwesili and these are your hard facts this is the big three, the big three. on the hard facts on 99.3 nigeria info <laughs> Is there a justice gap at the state NSAS panels? Is there a justice gap at the state NSAS panels? Do you support the plan to ban open grazing in the South? And should state judiciary funds be deducted directly from FAC? Those are the big three. Let's talk. Our first story is from the Lagos NSARS panel. They awarded uh, 7.5 million naira to a petitioner who the police put in a wheelchair. And he is saying it's an insult. Remember last year I told you about Ndukwe Ekekwe. He, uh, he was a trader at Alaba Market. He told the panel that police falsely accused him of selling stolen goods. He said that the police beat him with guns, broke his teeth, and threw him out of a second-story window. When he fell from that window, he broke his spine. And he has been in a wheelchair since that happened. The police did not deny the incident. They just said that Ekekwe was not pushed out of the window, that Ekekwe jumped out of the window. Well, the panel did not believe the police. They ruled in Ekekwe's uh, favor and they awarded him damages of 7.5 million naira. 
But Tekekwe doesn't like the figure. He actually yelled at the panel immediately they announced it. He said, quote, waiting be 7.5 million naira. I spent over 30 million naira. I sold my land. Waiting I won't take 7.5 million naira do. Waiting I won't use that money do. I sell my land, my property, all my goods. Waiting be that money. Waiting I won't use them do. For treatment, I'll be for what? End quote. So after that happened, his lawyer took him outside to calm him down and then they came back to accept the money. Now, I want to know what you think about this situation. First of all, do you agree with Ndukwe Ekekwe that 7.5 million naira is too small for what he went through? Now, remember what I said. Trader at Alaba Market told the panel that police falsely accused him of selling stolen goods. They, they beat him with guns, broke his teeth, threw him out of a second-story window. That fall broke his spine and confined him to a wheelchair. Now, there's a reason the panel probably couldn't go higher than $7.5 Remember that this money is not coming from the police. This money is coming from the Lagos state government. So the panel has to make sure that the money the state government gave them can go round for every petitioner who makes their case. So because of that, you have to ask, is this compensation system good enough? Can the process work properly? Some activists have said that it should be the police themselves paying out the compensation since their officers are at fault. They say that there's no reason taxpayers should be paying that money, which is what the, the state government money is, taxpayers' money. They say that this thing, if police were to pay out of pocket, it will increase the police's accountability. By the way, the panel said that they still don't know the specific officers who crippled Ekekwe and that um, they are asking for an investigation to identify these officers. Do you think that these state panels have enough power to provide justice? I mean, they cannot compel the police to pay damages. And in the case of Ndukwe Ekekwe, they couldn't even compel the police to identify the culprits. So is there a justice gap at the panels? If you think there is, what do you think can be done to fill it? And don't forget about that uh, question I asked you earlier on about the compensation. Do you agree with him that 7.5 million naira is too small for what he went through? Our number is 01465-7190. 01465-7190. For men, 0700993-993-993. 0700993. 0700993. 993-993. That's the number that men should call. Women call 01465-7190. 01465-7190. We've got WhatsApp as well. WhatsApp is 080-959-75805. 080-959-75805. We've got um Chike in Abiokuta on the line. Hello, Chike. Thank you very much for calling us. Hello, hello, Chike. Welcome. Go ahead. Uh, okay. Hello. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Chike. Yeah. Okay. Uh, concerning the question about uh, whether the money is small or not, mm. it's very small, my sister. Okay. First of all, hear the story. They've removed his teeth. How can he chew meat? So, uh, he'll chew it so I'll give it to him to swallow a bit. That's, that's, you've, you've destroyed part of his life. Then, two, so, if this guy have died, will they be talking about money? I'm sure they won't be the case because you won't be to so that. Uh, I'm injured or not. Then three, if he has a family, a wife, you know how devastating it will be for the wife or for the children to see their dad in a wheelchair. Hmm. And then what is 7.5 million? It's small. 7.5 million should just be the transport money for him coming there and going. I believe in New York or those people, when police want to compensate or whoever, the money they should be given. Because they have that money. They have the money. If they want to buy cheap or drunk as Remember, it's not to them. If you want to host parts, it's not them. So 7.5 million is more. At least for compensation, my amount should be at least 300 million naira. 
for him. He's in a wheelchair. If you want to shoot, this person will come and pack his shit. So they should consider all those things. 7.5 million is nothing. All right, Chicken. Thank you very much. Thank yeah. you very much for calling. Uh, 01465-7190 is our number for women. 01465-7190. For men, 0700-993-993-993. 993 Hello, thank you very much for calling us. Yeah, um, as regards to the young man. What's your name, sir? I'm a nice Michael. Good to have you here. Go ahead. Yeah, um, I'm so disappointed with the whole development. Okay. Why won't the police be involved? Why would there not be a space or a provision where the police will be brought into this issue? Well, they can't Why compel the police. The police? Uh, sorry? They can't compel the police. They should. They should, because then there is no justice. If the police crew are not a part of the, 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 the process, then the whole thing is entirely nonsense. It's not going to work. I think, and I, I, I think it's wisdom for the police to be compelled to be part of these processes. Because if not, the, the, the whole thing is entirely uh, a waste of time. Because they will still go all out and do the same thing to somebody tomorrow. You can imagine the trauma this guy went through, having beaten him up, and they threw him up from the second floor. You can imagine two floors. I, I don't understand. I don't understand. Only sometimes I feel so terrible about this whole thing. If they are not ready to compare the police to be part of these processes, then it's better they just shut down the whole thing. Because I want to believe that this guy will have been to the hospitals and have paid through his nose to at least to be alive. Then we are talking about 7.5. Thank God help us. Thank you very much for calling. We've got Peace in Aja on the line. Peace, hello. Uh, Peace isn't there anymore. Please call back if you can. 99.3, hello. Uh, sorry about that. Call back if you can. 0700 993 993 993. That's for men. For women, 01465 7190. Hello, thanks for calling us. Hello. How are you, sir? What's your name? I'm good. My name is John. Hi, John. Go ahead. Yeah. Like, the, the, uh, I pity the, the young man. He's so pathetic. Hmm. But at the same time, with the evidence got in, I think it's possible for him to sue the Nigerian police in a private suit. Okay. Yeah, because we're growing. This country is growing. We think like this. And with the evidence that he's already got in, from the panel and everything, hmm. let him go out and sue the, sue the Nigerian police. Okay. Yeah, for his own, for his own, for, to, to pay damage to him privately. Then he can put whatever demand he wants. Hmm. Because this government, uh, government is just trying to make, find a, I mean, a common ground for peace. The government is not really trying to indict anybody. But in as much as the evidence has been produced to convince the panel that it, that the police did this and that money has been given, let him go ahead and sue them. He can put one billion. They can negotiate it to any, any, any amount. And this will be a deterrent to the Nigerian police because these things are still happening hmm. to date. Hmm. So, I mean, couldn't, we shouldn't live like this. All right. Thank you very right. much for calling. We've got Engineer Chris in Ejibo on the line. Hello, Engineer Chris. Welcome. Engineer Chris, are you there? Ah, oh, sorry about that. Call back if you can. Hello. Thank you for calling us. All right, then. Hello. Good afternoon. Hello. Hello. All right. We don't quite have anybody there. I think we've got enough time to um, get into our second story. But I also want to take my time with that second story because it's quite long and I don't want to rush it, right? So um, let me just keep taking your thoughts on this first story. And then after the break, we'll dive right into the second story. Our second story is um, reactions to what the Southern Governor said, right? But our first story is from the Lagos NSARS panel. They awarded 7.5 million naira to a petitioner who the police put in a wheelchair and he is saying that that money is an insult 
Ndukwe Kekwe, we talked about him last year, trader at Alaba Market, told the panel that police falsely accused him of selling stolen goods. Um, he said they beat him with guns, they broke his teeth, they threw him out of a second-story window, broke his spine as a result of that fall. Now he uses a wheelchair. Police did not deny that incident, but police said that uh, they did not push him, that he jumped. Panel did not believe the police, though. They ruled in Ekekwe's um, favor, and they awarded him 7.5 million naira in damages. But he didn't like that figure. He doesn't like that figure. He yelled at the panel immediately. They announced it. Waiting be 7.5 million, he asked them. I spent over 30 million. I sold my land. Waiting I won't take 7.5 million too. Waiting I won't use the money do. I sell my land, my property, all my goods. Waiting be that money. Waiting I won't use and do. For treatment and be for what? That's what he said. End quote. And he yelled this at the panel. Immediately they announced that they were awarding him 7.5 million. So after that happened, after he yelled, his lawyer took him outside, calmed him down. Then they came back and then he accepted the money. So my first question off of that story is if you think that money is too small for what he went through. Now, I also gave you the reason that the panel probably could not award more than $7.5 because this money is not coming from the police. The money is coming from Lagos State Government. Panel has to make sure that money go reach everybody with competition. You understand? So because of that... The, another question is, if this compensation system is good enough, can the process work properly? Some activists have said that, um, now police, now I suppose they pay this money, no big, you know, legal state government, because now their officers, they are, they are at fault. It will increase police accountability if the money is coming out of their own pocket. Especially if you think about the fact that the panel is saying they don't know the specific officers who crippled the Kekwe and they are asking for, an, for uh, an investigation to identify them. So do you think that these state panels have enough power to provide justice? They can't compel police to pay damages. Uh, uh, they couldn't even compel police to identify the culprits in the case of Undukwe. So is there a justice gap at these panels? What can we do to fill that gap? One caller has suggested, well, since the police have admitted to the crime, this man can still sue them in regular court, sue the police directly, not through the panels. But uh, I think a lot of the evidence um, gathered at these panels are inadmissible in court. So there's also that. But again, perhaps a smart lawyer could finesse it. I don't, I don't know. 07000. Oh no, verse 0700. 993, 993, 993. And 01465-7190. That number is for women. 01465-7190. For women. For men, 0700-993-993-993. Hello, thanks for calling us. Hello. How are you, sir? What's your name? All right. Welcome back. Yeah. Am I Sandra? Yes, this is Sandra. Go ahead. Oh, <laughs> good afternoon, my sister. Good afternoon. <laughs> it was the other lady that uh, connected me earlier. Oh, so yeah. I want to ask of uh, credit. Oh. I have to return. Oh, sorry. Good afternoon. Okay, Pano. Oh, dear. My cake, man. Thank God, my sister. Parker de Sella. Same to you. <laughs> you have been in a Christian August. They were calling for me to go. Okay. Welcome. Yeah, see, Sandra, uh, mm -hmm. you see, mm -hmm. for the police to learn their lesson, uh, every couple or every dime that should be paid to any victim, as compensation hmm. to come from the post of the police. Every one naira or every dime should come from the post of the police. Hmm. Because they can't commit a crime and another person is paying the debt for them. Hmm. If, if this money is taken out of their account, mm -hmm. whatever is left, let them share it for themselves because they are the cause of all the problems. Okay. To me, that is the only thing that can solve it. Because if the Lagos State government is now dealing that, uh, putting that beef for them, they will continue to be rascal. They continue to mess around. Mm. They will say, after all, anything where we do, we have those who we say for us. But if it comes out of their pocket directly, directly, if like the commissioner is collecting one million, maybe at the end of the month he collects three hundred thousand, he will call his voice to order. Mm. So, yeah, that's that's the only way we can do this thing and it affects them so that they now behave properly and know that they are there for the people and not for their themselves alone. 
Okay. All right, engineer. Like, 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 yeah, like what is happening in the Southeast now? Mm-hmm. You know that most of them don't want to go there because they're afraid. But how can you brutalize another person, kill him, paralyze him, and you don't want to pay? But you, your life is important to you because you have gone, you have power, you believe you can treat Nigeria anyhow you like. Let Lagos State come and stop funding it. Let them pay. Let, even if that man said it's one million, one billion, let them pay them on that on that month from mm. their own force. Mm. Thank you. Happy blessed day. Thank you very much for calling. You too as well. We've got Twitter at Nigeria Info FM, and I think um, I'm going to go there and take a look at some of the thoughts that you've shared with us uh, so far. So here is uh, Ben. Uh, ben is talking about um, the, the southern ban on open grazing. All right, Ben, we will take a look at that when we come back from this break coming up. Uh, let's see, who do we have here? Who do we have here? Who do we have here? Hmm. Okay, so everyone on Twitter is talking about the second story. All right, then. Let me go to Facebook, then, and see what the thoughts on Facebook are. Facebook is Nigeria Info 99.3. Nigeria Info 99.3. That's for Facebook. Huh? And we're also streaming on YouTube, by the way. YouTube, uh, Nigeria Info FM. That's it. Nigeria Info FM. All right. On Facebook, Ismail Olabayoladejo says... Uh, what is going on in this country? That man should accept the compensation since it's coming from the state government. The police is a federal government agency, not state. So he should collect the money, appreciate the state for their good gesture. If he has any case, he should direct that to the federal government. And what is the police commission doing in this regard? What is their contribution? I don't even understand why the state government cannot drag the federal government into this since the state doesn't have authority over the police. All right, Lagos. Let's take that break. We'll be right back. Hi there. If anyone ever asked you for your banking app password or... All right, you're listening to The Big Three on Hard Facts on 99.3 Nigeria Info. I'm Sandra Ezekwesili, and the Southern governors say that they want to ban open grazing. For our second story, let's look at the reactions to that announcement. But first of all, a uh, quick update on that move. The Southern governors are saying that they want to enshrine this ban in law. Now, remember that some of these states have not, uh, they, they have, some of these states have already passed anti-open grazing laws. So now those southern states who haven't will be introducing bills in their houses of assembly. Femi Falano had, had said yesterday that um, he supports the ban if it is backed by actual laws. So I'm guessing he's going to be happy with this step by the governors. Now, let's move to the reactions. I told you yesterday that the Southern Senators Forum have approved the move. Today, the Southern House of Reps members have joined them. But we're seeing some disapprovals. Mietia last National Secretary, Kautal Hore, said, The governors are confused and mischievous. Are headers the problem of this country? Are they IPOP killing people up and down, burning police stations? End quote. Now, I want you to remember that the governor said that they were doing this because of the high number of violent clashes where militias working for herdsmen have attacked farmers who don't want them on their land because of the damage caused by cattle. And also, there's the Global Terrorism Index, which has put herdsmen militias in Nigeria very close to the top for the last three years. So I'm guessing Kauta Hori of Mieti Allah disagrees with the Global Terrorism Index and the Southern Governors about the level of violence connected or not connected to militias supporting herdsmen. 
We also heard from Kulen Ala, uh, Cattle Rearers Association, Kakran. They said that the ban goes against the concept of freedom of movement as long as the people are peaceful. So this raises the question about whether the southern states can issue a blanket ban on open grazing or if they have to treat it on a case-by-case -case basis and differentiate between the violent um, herders and the herders encroaching on people's farms from the ones who are moving peacefully and not um, trespassing. We also heard from Professor Usman Yusuf. He's the former executive secretary of the National Health Insurance Scheme. And he says that the Southern governors had no right to announce this ban without consulting with Fulani leaders. Now, I want to know whether you agree or disagree with that. Are Southern governors and Southern Houses of Assembly required to consult with others before passing a law that bans an economic activity that they believe is dangerous for their states? That's a question you have to answer. Now, before you answer, let me provide some context. Right now, in Kano and some other Northern states, the sale, distribution, and consumption of alcohol are illegal, according to the Hizba boards. And that's because of Sharia law. Now, the question is, when those Sharia laws were passed, banning alcohol because the state governments felt it was dangerous, were the other states consulted? Were different ethnic groups and religions whose people sell, distribute, or consume alcohol consulted? And then should that same standard apply to the ban on open grazing or not? If you say it should apply, why do you think it should apply? If you say it shouldn't apply, why shouldn't it apply? But Professor Yusuf did not stop there. He also said that the southern state governments must provide land for herders if they want to ban open grazing. If you're watching us on Facebook, I'm about to play that video for you. If you cannot watch us on Facebook, here's the audio of what he was saying. Land Use Act have taken over this land. So all this crisis is about land. So governments need to act responsibly and see the security implications of this crisis. And this can be solved, not militarily. Professor, Prof, Professor Usman, what I asked you earlier, I do not know whether you can hear me now, I just hope you can hear me now, was yeah, the, I can. what the governor said wasn't that anybody should leave the southern parts of the country. What they said was ban on open grazing, carrying cattle all over the place must stop. That's what they said. Good. What's Good. Your... Then southern governors, yeah, then southern governors must provide, need to provide where places where this, this, this Fulani will graze their cattle. Now, remember, the southern governor said that the federal government should work with willing states to set up ranches. So they're not opposed to ranches. They are opposed to it being by force. They want the states to have a right to choose. But Professor Yusuf is saying that it should be compulsory on the states to set up ranches if they ban open grazing. So who do you agree with? Do you agree with Professor Yusuf or do you agree with the Southern Governors? Don't worry, I'm going to do a recap for you because I know that there are so many angles to this story. So it may be difficult for you to keep up. But just just, just bear with me. And speaking, speaking of the Southern Governors, their chairman, Rotimi Akere Dolu of Ondo State, has reacted to the reactions. He said, quote, Whether we like it or not, times have changed and this must change. We must adopt a modern system of animal husbandry. In this day and age, they cannot continue taking cows from, by foot from Kano to Port Harcourt, end quote. But here's what's funny about all of this. The Nigerian Governors Forum has already approved an end to open grazing. Back in February at their 25th virtual meeting. At that meeting, all 36 governors, both southern and northern, agreed that open grazing had to be brought to an end. They just said that the states have to create a framework for making it happen. So I guess the question now is... Are the Southern governors using a proper framework? I don't know. You tell me. 
Meanwhile, at Fenny Ferry, uh, Middle Belt uh, Forum, Yoruba Council of Elders and Pandef have all come out in support of the ban. They are saying that it's a necessary step to prevent attacks on farmers and communities. Arawa Consultative Forum also supports the ban, but they also added a caveat that some of the groups um, calling for the ban uh, uh, and for restructuring really just want um, Nigeria to disintegrate. That's their caveat. By the way, we have a developing story here in Lagos about an alleged land invasion by armed herdsmen. The landowners have actually written a petition to the governor to intervene. They are the uh, Ali Moibi Balogun family of Odoegiri town in Eredo LCDA. That's in it. According to them, a group of herdsmen invaded their land in March using gunfire to scare everybody away. The family claims that they reported to the local police, but the police arrested them as suspects. So now they are begging the governor to step in. So these are the types of cases that Afeni Ferrer and the YCE are pointing to when they say that they support the ban on open grazing. Now let's come to you, Lagos. What do you think? Do you agree or disagree with these uh, groups saying that the ban was uncalled for? Do you agree that the southern governors should have consulted with northern states and Fulani leaders? What about the fact that all the governors in the nation already agreed that open grazing must end? 0700-993-993-993-0-1-465-7190-0-1-465-7190-0-1-465-7190-0-7-0-0-993-993-993-993. That first number is for women and the second number is for men. 0 7 0 0 993 for men. For women, 0 one 465 190. We've got WhatsApp in case you can't call. WhatsApp is 080-959-75805. John is in Lagos Island. Hello, John. Yeah, good afternoon, Sandra. Good afternoon. Good to have you here. Yeah. Um, I support the southern governors for the approach. It's a gentleman approach. I bet it's a direct approach as well. Mm. And for the cattle, uh, what's the called? Cattle, whatever they call themselves. Is because the government is uh, acting on a double standard level. Every time every, any, any governor gives a statement or anything that will protect his people against this cattle open grazing, these people come out, this cattle uh, McBan, they always come out with statements before the federal government. So I don't know whether they are now becoming a pressure group of the president or the, 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 the body language of Mr. President, but it would fail. This time around, the game has changed. No governor has anything to lose. The president just has two years to go. And with the way things are, every governor is the chief security of his, of his, of his state. Every land belongs to, the, to, to, the, to the, every state. And land belongs to the people under the custody of the governor. So whether it's polite it or not, they must fall in line. What is remaining now, every state should go and make their laws. All right. It's a general thing. Every state should go and enact laws to, in, in line with the decision that they put out. Then if anybody violates that, that law, then that person should be dealt with. Let's see what, whether the federal government will come and defend. All right. Thank you very much, John. 99.3. Hello. Hello. Hello, Sandra. Thank you for calling. What's your name? My name is Mrs. Bucci. Mrs. Bucci, welcome. Go ahead. Please, let me tell you just a little story. Okay. I have an elder sister, husband okay. and wife. Okay. They are farming at a, at a kitty state. Are you hearing me? Uh-huh. Loud and clear. They are farming at a kitty state. Okay. This, if, if any time I want to go there, hmm. I will, guys, I will, if you have your car, just go there as a single Mm. You will bring yam, you will bring everything that human being is eating. Mm. But do you know the idea they are an elected state mm. more than thirty two years okay. before Buari no more than twenty eight years before Buari man came in. Mm. 
Okay. When Buhari Na came as a president, mm. and then every time you'll be telling me that these people are going about. And if me myself, we are from Delta State, but we grow in the Yoruba land. Okay. I used to see, when, even when I'm small, I mm. used to see all these people, all these uh, Fulanis, where they'd be carrying cow up and down. Okay. And I, have, I haven't seen them with God. Okay. But each time my sister would be called, maybe to roll that, come and see, come and. Do you know that, to cut the long story short, do you know that my sister and her husband, they have left a kitty state to Delta State now? Hmm. The people that gave them the land, mm. how many people they have key inside the family? They cannot be able to go to the farm. They cannot be able to do anything. When the problem is too much because of Esme, they now relocate back to their past state. Mm. Because of Esme. And this thing is not happening before. It's when Buhari take over president that all these problem things come out. So no governor should allow any 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 full any estimate to, 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 to stay in this in this state they shouldn't allow it because these people have hidden agenda okay Thank you very much for calling Mrs. Bucci. Now, I should, of course, correct um, that, um, you know, herdsmen militia started operating uh, when uh, President Buhari took over. No, they, they have actually been there. It got worse and worse, of course. But, um, um, I mean, we have heard uh, militant um, herdsmen, um, you know, um, killing farmers. We have heard, we, we have had um, clashes between herders and um farmers for for a while before even buhari took office so uh, that has nothing to do with that uh, that's uh, simply a coincidence that it, it got worse that that has nothing to do with the other one way or the other we've got mrs osai in badagri on the line hello mrs osai yeah good afternoon good afternoon Sandra. good to have you yeah, here happy to yeah happy to get to today mm. but telling this full and people of a uh, health mm -hmm. the thing is annoying when i was a little child mm -hmm. In the village, we used to see them. When in the farm, you see them. The real Fulani, the ones that are those in those days, okay. when they want to go into our farm, mm. you see them using their, their stick. They chase them out of the farm. Okay. To stop them from eating the cassava and the yam. Okay. But these days, you see them push. You know, they just take them into the farm. They eat all people's yam or cassava. What kind of thing is that? Oh, you're saying that the herdsmen eh? you're saying that the herdsmen you knew when you were growing up did yes, not allow their yes, cows. It's not this one, yes, not mm -hmm. this one. This one is that they have a hidden agenda. If I'm not mistakenly saying it. What kind of thing is this? Harassing but, people look at what what what, what, do you, what do you what do you what what do you think the, the, the agenda is? Because people keep saying the hidden agenda. agenda. What's the agenda? Yes, they have a hidden agenda. Look at we have food crisis now. Look at cassava. Cassava, Gary used to come from Delta State. Mm -hmm. You know, a pint of Gary now is a thousand plus. Mm -hmm. Just because of this problem. Yam, you cannot go to yam. May I, I sell yam? Mm -hmm. You want to buy of yam going to 2000 something because of these people. Mm -hmm. they, they have a hidden agenda. All I'm saying, all I'm saying, I'm, I'm supporting this Southern government. I pray that they should enforce it. Not only passing the law, they should enforce it. They, they should not give them a space at all. Let them go. After all, poultry farm, they have a land. They raise their farm, the chicks there. They go and look for feed and feed them. Mm. And bring, is it not their own business? Mm. Why should they use their own business to obstruct other people's own? This thing should stop. It should stop. I'm angry about this thing. And when they say the Mehdi Allah will come out and be saying all sorts of nonsense as if they want to compel everybody to bow to their, to their own rules. They want everybody to bow to them. It's not necessary. It's not. We can't do that. Enough of that thing. All right, Mrs. Osai, thank you very much for calling. Uh, I have to, of course, rem remind you that the governors are not stopping people from staying in the state. They are just stopping open grazing. So the, the thing where you have the uh, cattle, you know, walking up and down, going to different farms, that's what they're stopping. The, the herders can be in the state, but you can't do open uh, grazing. So ranches are, are, are a solution. That's what uh, everybody else all over the world has done. You buy up land, you allow the cattle to graze on that land, you make sure that that land is arable enough uh, for the cattle to always be well fed. You're not moving the cattle from one place to the other. That's what is happening in modern times. And
And I have to say, that that's why, you know, when people are saying hidden agenda, there's really no hidden agenda. The only reason this is happening is because we have um, fewer and fewer uh, um, resources um, um, in the north and a lot of the resources are down south. And so the cows have to come down south to be able to eat, to be able to drink water. This is a problem as old as time, all the way back to the Bible, all the way back to Bible days. Farmers and herders have always clashed. But civilization, as it evolved, found ways to solve this problem. And some of the ways include a ban on open grazing. Some of the ways include ranches for, for herders. That way, everybody's resources are protected. So that's the way the southern governors are going. But we have people who say that the southern governors um, should have consulted uh, with the Fulani before doing this. Uh, some people are saying, oh, the southern governors are hiding on, under this uh, ban to disintegrate the country. Uh, some others are saying that um, this is unnecessary because, well, uh, the herders are not IPOB. Um, you know, so, so these are some of the reasons we're hearing for why this ban should not be happening. What are your thoughts? 99.3. Hello. Hello. Thank you for calling. What's your name? Sandra, our president. How are you? I'm very well. What's your name, sir? My name is Prince Wires. Great to you and all Nigeria, Baraka de Sala. Baraka de Sala as well. Go ahead. Hi, right, Sandra. Number one. Is it, so, is it, an, is, is it not an insult for Indifidia or Miti Allah to tell to the governor? That can be informed them before taking decision. It's a very big insult. And I want to all the governors to please go back to your state. Tell your state assembly to enact a law. This is we are talking about now. All the 26 state governors have already taken decision then that open grade to be banned. What are we talking about? If I'm a farmer, I grow my, my crop. The, the, the acacias enter with it three days. They eat everything that I grow for the past six months or eight months. What are we talking about? To have to prevent problem, to prevent war. That's why they want to enact the law. Only what I will tell the governors is for you to go back to your state, create ranch. If if not only the full and the cow, Every individual can rear cow. Yeah, I mean, the Akiti state government just I flew in foreign cows. Go and buy it for the north, mm. brought it down to the south, and put it in the ranch. And the federal local government created it, or state government created it. Each cow will pay tax. We are, we, we are making money. So I want the governor to do all this. And the, Sandra, mm. the first uh, topic we, we talk about, mm. number one, mm -hmm. I want to say thank you to Lagos State Governor. When you set up some committee, you know, in olden days in this country, mm. they will say after submission the, the 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 report, they will write white paper before they can do anything. But this, this present uh, committee setting up mm. the investigation panel, mm -hmm. they probably give them money. Out of that money, the the head of the panel mm. is giving money out to some people that is that have genuine case. And this man in question we are talking about today, I think this thing that happened, it doesn't happen to the SRC problem. The lawyer for this man to vote have gone to court since. But as it is now, the money given to them, if I were that man, mm. it's not the man that's complained, because I was, it, 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 it's a mother that complained bitterly. Mm. I will say thank you to the state government. At the end of the day, I will not go to court. You can say one billion on the police, two billion. But first of all, say thank you to Lagos State Government. That is what I what I will do if I'm in possession of that uh, man. All right, Sandra. Mm -hmm. May God bless you. Bless you as well. Thank you very much. Let me bring you our third story before we move on to more calls. The Jusun strike. That's the Judicial Staff Union of Nigeria. I'm sure you know that they've been on strike for more than one month because they want state executives to recognize the financial autonomy of the judiciary. 
Chris Ngige, the Labour Minister, met with the Jusun leaders to negotiate an end to the strike. And now Jusun has asked the federal government to do something as a proof of good faith. They want the Accountant General of the Federation to make a deduction from every state's federal allocation in May to pay the state judiciary directly. Now, let me explain why this is controversial. Here's how FAC works. Every month, all the federation revenue comes into FAC from agencies like NMPC and FIRS. Then the money is allocated to every local government, every state government, and the federal government based on a formula. After that, the Accountant General of the Federation pays each state government its own allocation and the allocation of the local government in that state. Then at the state level, they have their own uh, jack exercise. That's where the State Accountant General gives each local government their own money, leaving just the state government's own allocation. That state allocation should be shared among the executive, legislature, and judiciary based on their budgets but justin is complaining that the state accountants general who serve the executive are not remitting the money to the judiciary so now they don't want the money to go through jack anymore they want the federal account accountant general to deduct the state judiciary money directly at fac and share it to all the state judiciaries through the njc but the state governments are saying that it's not constitutional they say that the constitution doesn't permit the federal government to seize state government money and share it. Only state executive has that power. That's why they have ignored President Buhari's um, executive order from, from last year, from May last year, that they should all pass um, financial autonomy laws for the judiciary. You remember that executive order? So that's the deadlock right now. And it's a tough deadlock to resolve because on the one hand, the state judiciaries under the constitution have a right to financial autonomy from the state executives. But on the other hand, the state executives also have autonomy from the federal executive. <laughs> so how can the federal executive defend the rights of the state judiciaries without violating the rights of the state executive? That's the big legal and constitutional question here. And I want to know what you think. Has this strike affected you? This Juson strike, has it affected you? Courts are closed or partially open as a result. Has that affected you? Are you a lawyer? Do you have a case in court? Is this strike affecting you? 0700993993993. That's our number for men. Our number for women is 0700. Uh, it's 01465-7190. 01465-7190. We've got Chinasa on the line from Ogun State. Hello, Chinasa. Chinasa, are you there? No. Thank you very much for calling, though. Hello. 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 Thanks for calling. What's your name? Uh, good, good afternoon, Sandra. Good afternoon. Welcome. Yeah, this is Amos. I'm calling from Ikoi. Hello, Amos. Go ahead. Yeah, I want to react on the second story. Yes, go ahead. Uh -huh. I mean, um, the meeting that you ask and that you are sure that according to the Nigerian government for mm -hmm. let me tell you something, Sandra. Yeah. Anything discussed nationally, when it goes back to region, mm. what the governors or what our representatives hmm. are telling us is different with what has been discussed nationally. Okay. Especially in the northern Nigeria. Okay. 19 northern governors will go and sit down and discuss. But guess what? What? The information to the people, the inform information that they will reveal to, to their followers hmm. is different. I see. I want somebody from the north to call or have an interview with any other person. The reaction of the other professor, I think, I'm sorry to call him, maybe you don't know what he's saying. Okay. Ranches and cattleries is a personal business. That's right. You have to come and collect, to, um, collect with the southern governors. If they have access on you, if they have land on you, then they can provide it for you. Then you rent it. But you saying it should be compulsory. Sandra, let me give you a story on what is happening in my land right now. Hmm. 
where I farm, where I was born, hmm. my grandfather was born there. My father was born there. Okay. He farmed before my father, before I. Five years ago or three years ago now, when, when uh, especially this current administration come on power, hmm. my elder brothers can never go to farm because of this headers crisis. Okay. Right now, my inherited land, hmm. nobody can go over there to farm. What state is that? I'm from Kaduna State, ah. precise Ikulu land. Okay. I'm speaking with you. Somebody will call you and confirm. Mm -hmm. A particular place called Laduga, mm -hmm. that place in Zangon Kata, local government. Okay. Sandra, right now, my people are in case. My people are in danger. And then somebody will come and say from the south that they should provide land. No, I disagree. That is why you see, whenever it's come on issue on the north, a problem on the north, mm. or the issue from the header, mm -hmm. I always raise my voice and say, "Other region, please defend yourself, because what is coming over there, over there is quite different." The headers and um, so that you, you say the, the crisis has not been has not just started now. Mm. Yes, who pump it? In this current administration, their agenda is what? They want to bring you what happened in the 80s when Usman Danfordio was there. Let other northern and call and argue me. I'm ready to sacrifice my life to challenge anybody that with evidence that I have. That agenda, please, other region. What's, what's the evidence that you have? The evidence that I have, let everybody challenge me and take me to court and then I will present it. <laughs> Sandra, believe me, you. There is not everything that we can say on earth. Mm. You know that. Mm. So, other region, please. So, I mean, support your governors, even even though they are just on based on the allowance they are received from the federal. Mm. No, or uh, followers, tell them this is we, we vote for you. This is what we want. It is our land. The and invaders cannot come and take over your property. We in the north, we are crying because we are the minority, and then others. What are you talking about then the other region? Where are we running to? Then I will come back to South here. I'm, I'm not at peace. Then I will go back to Nasanra. Right now, anything head us, my village, they cannot sleep in my village. Anything head us. What are you talking about? Then a professor, you, you, I mean, you, I mean, you are sitting in Abuja with over 10 police. You are talking that, that they should provide land for you. For what? Thank you. Thank you for calling, Amos. Uh, positive Change on Twitter says, I disagree with the prof. The southern governors do not need to consult with the northern governors before they ban open grazing because the northern governors implemented Sharia law without consulting them. Uh, Mr. Bobby on Twitter says, the southern governors should not allow open grazing. If the north feels otherwise, they should provide money for the herders to get lands, not the government giving out free land. We've grown above animals walking around the country country all right more messages on twitter let's take a look at some Ajulo Charles says where were these voices when human lives were being destroyed is it that those lives don't matter uh, more than herders and their businesses going by this i believe the governors are human enough and have touched and have been in touch with contemporary realities open grazing is backwardness let's move on jimmy lomack on twitter says i support the plan ban on open grazing because no advanced country uh, practices that system i rather suggest that the herders should adopt ranching where they will buy their land without any government providing any support uh, eddie asenio says open grazing should not only be banned in the south uh, but all over the country. Where in the world were you walking the street and you see cows running the streets? It's madness. All right. On Facebook, Shobayo Olumuiwa says, Look, Sandra, this is Nigeria. The way you guys uh, are treating we that take our time to call is very, very um, poor. What are you talking about, Shobayo? Uh, Okay, Shabaya seems to be talking about an entirely, entirely different subject. But hey, thank you very much for commenting on Facebook. Also on Facebook, uh, Lem Juegu LM says, My brother, Atol Atol Nawicho, let him just collect the money knowing that nothing can equate his being completely normal. It's a pity he has to go through this in life. As for the governor's resolutions, the threat by the northern hegemony shows um, to all that they just want to lord over everybody in the country.
We've got uh, Olami Lekon Wasiu who says, With the Jusun, FG should not pay their money to the state government account. No state governor can call the accountant general to ask where is the money for the Jusun. The, constitutional, the Constitution already backs it, except federal government just did lip service in passing the Constitution. All right, let me go quickly to WhatsApp where we have a few other thoughts. WhatsApp is 080-959-75805. Mm, someone says I'm defending Fulanis. Okay. Mayor from Aja says ranching is an art of cattle rearing in developed countries. Argentina produces more beef than any other country. Netherland cows produce over 40 liters of milk per cow a day. And they don't practice open grazing. The cattle are healthier and bigger when they are. We are more than just radio. <laughs>